what's going on what's going on core of you family community of restoration and enlightenment kenneth page and bianca page um before we get started this weekend wishing all of the mothers out there all of you mothers who do so much for their husbands and boyfriends and children and just for their families and happy spirits. And, and yes and also the ones who have mother spirits happy mother's day to my beautiful wife happy mother's day she has a nice big thing of roses in there happy happy mother's day tasha happy mother's day to all of you beautiful beautiful people out there in the, the world that's right that's right right i think it's a time to reflect and one thing I learned is that if you are good to someone else's children, at least you know one day somebody will be good to yours when you need them to be. And I think I had a mother in spirit before I ever even became a mother because there's always somebody you can uh, hold space for. That was my mom and my grandma. They used, to te they used to teach that a lot. Be good to someone else's child because one day you're going to want someone to be good to your child. Uh, man, they used to say that so much. So that's pretty crazy that you just said that right now. Yeah, so happy Mother's Day to all of the beautiful mothers out there. Wonderful doing your thing. Today, we want to talk about wifey and I had a, had one of those weeks that you have and some of you that are on, you know, uh, when you're in a relationship. And we try to really be transparent in our relationship. Every day, even though we do relationship coaching and we've gone to coaching and we've gone to relationship counseling before we were um, married and when we were dating and we still and, you know, anytime we find something that can add to the relationship, we always try to uh, go to it or watch it on Zoom or, you know, on the Internet, on YouTube, whatever it is, because right. you can you, you can never be too perfect or too great we can always learn right absolutely always all right and add so to your tool chest. always add to the tool so this week we had we had one of those weeks where we had some disagreements and we like to be transparent so we had some disagreements this week we had to sit down and that's what we want to talk about today is and this can not just only be in relationships it can be in friendships especially in families um but if you are married if you're dating someone with your friends, whoever it is, we want to talk about normalizing uncomfortable conversations. Um, normalizing, what I mean is getting them to a place where they're not so uncomfortable, right? So there were some things this week that we disagreed on. Um, and, and listen, one thing that I will say to you couples out there, um, coaching, counseling, um, um, relationship counseling, counseling, and coaching is really good because it will give you tools for when you get to moments where you have those disagreements, you start to pull those tools out and they're useful, right? And it's good to know, to, it's good to know because you can use them in friendships, you can use them in business relationships, all of these things. You can use them with your children as parenting, all of these things that you can use, right? So when we have these moments where we're not necessarily in agreement or, or we have some disagreements or whatever, right? Um, happy Mother's Day, T. Happy Mother's Day. You are an MVP, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Um, when you have those moments, you want to be able to... It's okay to have disagreements. It's okay to have days where you may not see eye to eye, right? She's an, al she's an alpha female. I'm an alpha male. So we brought these two alphas together <laughs> trying to make them work in a relationship, right? And now we're raising two alpha children. So Lord help. Pray for us, y'all. A house full of al alphas. And so uh, oh when God. you have those moments when you don't see eye to eye, when you have disagreements, what do you do? Uh, because sometimes you have to have uncomfortable conversations. And what do I mean by that is you got to Put your ego to the side. You may have to apologize and say, I'm sorry. You may have to ask for, for forgiveness. You may have to um, you may have to say, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? You know, whatever it is that I mean, goes yeah, on. You, we woke up in the middle of the night. We were having a conversation at three in the morning. Just real brief. We rolled over and we just kind of like made up in the spirit or just, yeah. uh, we, I mean, it wasn't even like there was. We just acknowledge that we were going to do better next time. There it is. There it is. And so when you have those, and I, 
I agree battle all the way, man. Agree to disagree is the key from the beginning. And I and and I and it's easier said than done. And like I'm sure it's easier said than even when you type that on there, right? Agree to disagree because sometimes you get and I say this often, right? This is what happens the most time in relationships, friendships, families, whatever. When you have these moments where you don't agree with one another, what usually happens is you get an attitude or the other person gets an attitude because they can't control what you either say, think, or do. That's usually what happens. And so because I can't control what you either say, think, or do, now I'm mad. <laughs> now I'm upset and I got an attitude with you and I don't like you and now I'm ready to fight. And now it's a disagreement. Yeah, what do you think? No, absolutely. Because and you get frustrated because the other person won't respond or sometimes you're mad because you can't draw them into the conflict. Mm. They, they refuse. But, but um, interesting that you said my daughter's Mother's Day card that she made for me <laughs> at school said, um, I hope we get along or <laughs> something like that. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, sometimes I'm disobedient and sometimes you yell. And I bring that up because I said, well, baby, just because we don't always see eye to eye doesn't mean we're not getting along. Right, right. So in order to grow, you have to have space, like even on a team, uh, this is anywhere. you got to have space to be able to disagree because everybody's not going to always see everything the same way. Right. And sometimes it's through fleshing through issues that you actually up level or kind of get to higher ground no doubt because no doubt. you're not just stuck in the same old rut right. you're pushing each other to go higher look higher think different and sometimes it's about that too like getting out of your comfort zone so mm -hmm. to speak and then also being able to clearly articulate your needs and so i think yesterday i was trying to control the way my husband listened to me I didn't feel like he was listening to me the way <laughs> I wanted him to listen. And I was able to say that, but to his point, he said, I would, not only was I controlling... Um, what, What's up, George? What did you say? How'd you say it? No, you, you said, babe, this is what she said. This is what she did. She said, babe, I need you to listen to me. And I said, okay. And then she said, and then I started listening. She said, no, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, not like that. And it, and it happens. I mean, and I'm guilty of it. She's guilty. I'm not just going to put this all on her. I'm guilty of it. I was I was a little tired, though. I was. And I had told her I was a little tired. So I was kind of, ha I kind of had my head down laying. And so for her and fellas, y'all know this, with a woman, that's like, you're not paying attention. You're not locked in. You ain't hearing nothing that I'm saying. And I actually heard everything she was saying. She wanted eye contact <laughs> in that moment, you know, and in that space and in that place. And so we had that disagreement and we had that moment and we had to get through it. And sometimes you have to have those really un uncomfortable conversations. Families need to have those uncomfortable conversations. When you just call somebody to the carpet or, hey, you may step to the carpet and say, listen, hey, guys. And it really takes you removing your ego and your pride, uh, uh, all of these things. Hey, hey, dad, what's going on? Mr. Good, what's going on? Uh, tell mom happy Mother's Day. Um, it's always, uh, um, it's always a, uh, it's difficult to have those conversations. Look at all these mothers. Hey, Dia. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Mother's Day. It's always difficult when you're in your pride and your ego, though, because you don't want to let it go. And you want to hold on to it. And you want to say what you have to say. And you want to do what you have to do. And you want to get your point across. And it's not always, and, and we say it like in church and stuff alike, to be right is not always to be righteous. Because sometimes in life, you being right can cause more damage. You're right. We're not telling you not to, to let go of that. But sometimes you just have to hold back a little bit and say, okay, this is not the time. And, and you, have to ask yourself, you, have, you, have, you have to ask yourself this question. Am I saying this because... Because I want to make the situation better or am I saying this because I just want to be right? Yeah, I just want to be heard. I just need to get this energy off me. I, I um, Also, if you, I was in a, a, a great presentation today about burnout and, and stress. And when you are not in a good place, sometimes you just want to exchange that energy. And you ended up putting it on other people. Yeah. And and if you realize your stress um, indicators, 
is one of those for me it is and i have to recognize that i'm more prone to conflict when i'm stressed out mm. then i have to kind of be aware and let people know like you know what i'm not in a good headspace to talk about this right now because i'm just gonna not be very uh agreeable to so, anything so we often talk about that knowing your triggers we, mm. we she says that all the time it's really good for you to know your triggers because once you know your triggers once that trigger you know kind of shows itself then you should be hopefully mature enough to say to your people that surround you um, or whatever, or around you or whatever in your surroundings, hey, you know, I'm, I'm triggered right now. I'm not in a good space. Let's just give me a little moment. Let me get through this. So I, you know, and it may take a night. It may take whatever. But we're just talking about having those, uh, normalizing those uncomfortable conversations. And wifey and I, when we first started dating, we had a lot of uncomfortable conversations. I, I won't even say it was uncomfortable for us, but it was different because in the relationship that I had been in, I hadn't had those kinds of conversations. We covered a, a, a whole lot of things. Give an example. Um, we covered things like we talked about, you know, um, um, if oh, I'll, use, I'll do one that's probably popular with a lot of people that you know about. How do you handle if you see someone else that you're that you think is attractive? How do you handle that? Obviously, That's you're not you're not Ubering and you know like oh my god you're not like that you know but if you think that person's attractive if you say that now there's there's levels to this right so you're not gonna be disrespectful and crazy but if you say that person is beautiful you know if I say oh man that's a nice looking girl I like the way she carries herself or or we even had before if I saw a young lady um, and if she had on this outfit and I liked the outfit and if I thought wifey would look good in that. I'm like, babe, I think you would look good in that outfit. Can you get that? Those are some conversations because sometimes it can get uncomfortable. And for men, we might not want to say that because if you were with somebody um, and she thinks, well, you looking at her, you checking her out. Well, you're like, well, wait a minute. No, no, no. That, that's not what's going on here. That's not what's happening. I'm actually saying I think that you would look nice in this, you know. But I mean, hey, you have to also make sure that you uh, take the time to prove yourself in those moments to show that you're I trustworthy mean, too, that's right? That's <laughs> We talked about Telling one another, too, if you're working with someone that you find attractive or things like that. The reason it's good to go there and air it out, because even in the airing out process, you're now, like, taking away the secrecy from it and the taboo-ness. Yeah. And now, like I said to him, I think I told you, like, oh, wow, I think I find myself attracted to older men at times. Mm -hmm. Didn't we talk about that? Yes. And what you do is you kind of take the 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 secrecy out of it now it's not a thing and then you can put it on the table and then and then sweep it away and just talk about it like you would with anybody and there's like not that you're in some situation or anything like that it just allows you to be open in a new level with your partner yeah you're trying to you're trying to refrain from any entanglements right <laughs> yeah we don't want no entanglements, we don't want no entanglements. <laughs> even in your mind because what thoughts you thoughts become action yeah yeah they do you know do. Or, or if you entertain something too long um or being free enough to say i don't like the when when you wear that mm -hmm. or you know there's been times where, well the other day my husband came and he was like babe do you realize i can see under your clothing <laughs> i was like oh <laughs> hey, it gets you uncomfortable. Know. It gets but, uncomfortable. But the thing is, if you know, or or if I'm around him, or this hasn't been an issue because we've been in COVID, but just saying, you know, are you okay with me being sexy around other people or your friends? There's things you just need to put out there yeah. and talk about it, and like, hopefully, you can have everything in your relationship can feel safe. The, just based on how you say it, like if you don't weaponize it, if you don't use it to be hurtful, there really shouldn't be anything that's off limits. Yeah, I mean, I think this goes, this extends to families because I think if more families, I'm saying like grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, cousins, mom, dad, everybody get together um, and have some of those uncomfortable conversations about, you know, people in the family that may, you know, do certain things that you may not agree with. We need to talk about this. Um, if we don't, because these conversations, because they become uncomfortable, you may be embarrassed. And I've seen, and we've seen this. This is one of the biggest things. How is it that a grandmother can be um, subjected to being either being raped or molested? Then the daughter comes along because grandma didn't say anything to the daughter, 
and then the granddaughter comes along and the same things happen. So now you got three generations of women, sometimes four generations, that all have been subjected to rape or molestation or somebody in the family touching them, doing something, right? These are those uncomfortable conversations that need to happen so that you can protect the ones that's coming up under you. But because everybody's embarrassed, it's a family secret, nobody wants to talk about it. We want to protect the legacy of the family name so nobody wants to say anything. And then people in the family keep becoming victimized. We need to talk about it. We need to have these conversations. We need to say what's uncomfortable. Wifey and I, we talk about, hey, if this happens or this happened one time, that made me uncomfortable. Can you please not allow that to happen again? You know what I mean? And if she says, hey, can you please not allow? And then you got to you gotta really check yourself to respect it. You can get in the ego and be immature. I'm grown. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. Or you can say, this is the person that I want to live the rest of my life with. I'm, I want to love them and I want to respect their, their, their uh, opinion on this. And I'm going to do everything in my power not to go down that road again. These are some of the uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations that we need to have with one another. And once we start normalizing them, they won't become uncomfortable no more. Yeah, even things like, oh, so uh, switching to career, one of my uh, mentors was coaching me to, she was saying things that I needed to at work to feel, to set me up for success. Mm. And she was like, you would be surprised what other uh, groups of people ask for. Uh, for me, she was coaching me as a woman of color. So mm. she was saying, you need to ask for what you need and have them say no, whether it's a signing bonus or just like I've had people ask for loans to be paid off, uh, you know, wow. different things. She said, but so, we wow. don't ask and because those are things we're not really like coached and brought up to get used to asking, selling yourself, mm. talking yourself up. So, you know, that. That that's a that's a point, and that's difficult. That's so if you're a person that's really that's really uh, uh, humble, you know, you're kind of a little passive with with things and the way things going on. Asking for a raise or for a bonus seems might seem taboo, but if you're doing the work and you feel like you are worthy of that, you feel like the company's not seeing your value, then you should most definitely it's going to be uncomfortable, right? But when you normalize it, and listen, I have to be honest. My wife and my mother-in-law really coached me on that, you know, because, and I got on my job and said, hey, you know, and asked, you know, and I went in and said, listen, and when, and listen, they came to me and brought me an offer. And I said, okay, I'm not going to cause a ruckus, but I'm letting you know, I don't agree with this. I don't, I feel like it's disrespectful. Uh, I'll accept it because it's more than what I have, but I'm not happy with it. So I would let them know right then and there. I was going to be looking for other employment. And you know what my, my boss told me? You know what? You're right. Let me get back to you. And he came back to me in 48 hours and gave me what I was asking. And I, three weeks ago, had uncomfortable conversations, too, related to work and gave analogies. I said, hey, we're too close to the line. If we keep running like this, then, you know, if, if anything could happen, if someone's out sick or has a family emergency, we may not be able to function. Mm. And and we're now going to expand our team. And that wasn't comfortable, but it was just real. It, it was there just, you go. it wasn't anything I would normally say, but I think everyone in these times are understanding that there, that we all have life moments and that we bring the whole self to work. And we, this is mental health awareness month. Yeah, yeah. But really that is something that we should all keep top of mind and prioritize every every month there is no month for mental health awareness and so case in point we had an uncomfortable exchange because i had to tell my husband i was feeling like really burned out mm -hmm. you know and i asked him like how do you feel when i say that and my husband is so strong and just very kind of even keel like nothing ever really seems to rock his boat and where it became uncomfortable was like, really, we can't, when someone is talking to you and you're doing listening, you just have to honor what they're saying and not really say necessarily how you would do mm -hmm. unless they they solicit it. Mm -hmm. And I guess where our conversation became uncomfortable is that I really can't compare how he responds to how I respond. Right, right, right. And so 
um, I think the, the discomfort came in feeling like he was saying sometimes he thinks it's weak of me when I get in there and I didn't hear him and tell me what you said and how we kind of got to it because I was like, well, I want you to tell me what you really feel, right, right. but I don't want you to be judging me. Right. And I was, and I told her how I felt, you know, in the situation, not necessarily projecting that on what I thought of her, but I'm just saying, this is how I feel. This is how I look at it. And this is how I see it. So those are those uncomfortable conversations because if so we get if we get circle. if we get caught in our feelings, then now we mad at each other for for the rest of yeah. the night or a couple of days, we right? Got stuck there. And I I explained and I and I and I further articulated. Listen, this is how I feel. This is what I'm saying. This is how I feel. I'm not saying this is how you should feel. You telling me how you feel. This is how I feel. This is how I look at it. This is how I handle it. I'm not expecting you or trying to put this on you because we're too individuals once again right you're two individuals in a relationship trying to make it together as one and so it takes compromise it takes seeing each other and seeing each other for where that person is not for who you are and where you are in your walk in life and all of it is based on your past experience right so from my past that's how i felt and so you just got to talk about it. You got to talk through it, work through it, make sure you hear one and another. We had to circle back. So I understood that that what he really meant and where I could feel safe to express Absol myself. Again. Absolutely. And make and sure because you, you could shut down if you feel like the person is not allowing you to be vulnerable. And then the person you're talking to don't want to feel like you're controlling their response. So yes. it's a real delicate balance. Yeah. And so you have to make sure that you're listening to listen and not listen just to respond. Right. And because a lot of times, because yeah, a lot of times we're just listening to respond instead of listening to really listen, to really hear what this person is saying. OK. And so sometimes I have to say to my wife, I'm like, listen, this is we're not Miss Cleo. I'm not psychic. I don't know what you're thinking. Let me know. OK. Do you want me to respond to this or do you want me to just listen? And I'll ask her that, you know, and she says, yeah, you know, and there's sometimes she'll say, OK, now I want you to respond. What do you think? Now that opens the door for me to say what I need right. to say and talk about it and. And, and, you know, and get on that, that level. Hey, cuz, how you going? How you doing, girl? Um, so it's always beautiful. So that's what we're talking about today. So we're challenging all of you on this beautiful Mother's Day weekend, especially this Mother's Day weekend. Normalize uncomfortable conversation. What we mean by that is have those difficult conversations. You shouldn't walk around people feeling like you have to be censored. You know what I mean? Tell them, talk to them and say, hey, this is what we did. This is what we experienced. This is how I felt. Um, um, and it doesn't mean it doesn't you don't have to be mean spirited about it. Just tell them this is who I am. This is what's going on. You did this. This is how it make me feel. Or sometimes you have to, uh, uh, you know, pull back your ego and pride and say, hey, I apologize. I apologize. And that may be uncomfortable. Because you may feel like you were right or you may feel like they deserved it or whatever. You may say, I apologize. I didn't mean it that way. This is the way I meant it. I'm sorry. Please accept my apology so that we can move on and be better. So normalizing uncomfortable conversations. And with that, we'll, you know, I wanted to let you guys know Mother's Day is coming. It's a great time to uh, purchase the book, She Nominal Woman. I'm one of the co-authors with 22 others. And we're also, for those of you in the LA area, going to have a book signing on the 23rd. I'm going to drop the flyer in the comments uh, later. Um, but hey, the beautiful thing too is my co-authors have an initiative. So even if you already bought the book, um, we're doing like, we're buying more books and donating them to women uh, transitioning out of foster care, girls in foster care, um, things like that. So we will definitely... Uh, want to make sure you guys are in the know and it is a beautiful beautiful initiative to ensure that we are supporting one another so for all you women out there who are amazing if you have other moms or other women that are amazing consider buying the book for them and also um, we'll give you details on the 23rd for the book signing out here in LA we're doing one in Michigan um, uh, in June too so we'll just be going all over doing it and i appreciate all your support for all the core family that have already purchased and look lawanda said hers is on the way already Yay. happy mother's day lawanda beautiful yes, i love happy that mother's T day. tdj um, said it is it is important to not drop the mic we like to you know that that has really become a well, thing in our society because we like to say what we say and just drop the mic and walk away you know and i think i believe i didn't listen to it you know she was saying he said you must talk and communicate and really 
hear the person. Mm. Um, um, oh, like you don't want to drop the mic on one another. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. I, 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 I totally agree with that. You don't need to have those drop the mic moments all the time. Sometimes you need to really stop and hear. Hand the mic to the next person and let them <laughs> have, have what. And you step step back and listen. Normalizing, normalizing uh, uncomfortable conversations. Listen, we hope y'all have a beautiful weekend. To all you beautiful mothers out there, you are the real MVP. Yes, we wouldn't are. be here. Yes, we too. wouldn't do this without you. Even Christ Jesus had a mama. Amen. <laughs> so we love it. Uh, uh, we thank you for uh, all that you do and all that you are to our families. Um, so have a happy Mother's Day. Have a beautiful weekend. Um, if you don't have your mother, my heart goes out to you. I don't have mine, but B shares hers with me. Um, so uh, my heart goes out to you. We're praying for you. We hope that you do good. We hope that uh, everything is all right. And always follow us at the core of you. C-O-R-E of the letter U. Happy Mother's Day, Antoinette. And join us um, on YouTube, Instagram, and the website if you ever want to put a prayer request in and or anything. Facebook. Coaching, yes. Facebook. Yeah, um, the core of you. We are all a community of restoration and enlightenment, and we are joining one another here and up-leveling together. All right, y'all. Y'all have a beautiful and blessed weekend. And we always, Happy always Mother's Day, ladies. We <laughs> always like to hope and pray that you have peace in your heart and in your home. We holler. Peace. Peace.